Okay, this video is to talk about how you can get uh, multiple waveforms and higher frequencies out of the ESP32. Um, the way you do it is to use the sample files that come with the ESP IDF uh, development environment. There are a bunch of examples in there, and uh, the one that's running right now is called uh, DAC Continuous, and you can see it's producing four different waveforms. Um, this one's producing it currently at uh, two kilohertz so it's not particularly high but there's a uh, in terms of frequency but uh, there's another example in here um let me just switch to the um okay the examples directory so looking at the path here there's an esp directory and an esp idf directory and then there's an examples directory all this comes by virtue of downloading the express if um idf uh, tools. This is where you get that from their website. And uh, Express or ESP IDF stands for Express IF IoT Development Framework. And when you download that, you'll get a bunch of tools as well as all these examples which show um, how the device can be used for various functions. And within that, there's this peripherals directory. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to navigate through there in peripherals, DAC. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the signal generator as well as the DAC cosine wave. Those are two things that are provided. The DAC cosine wave um, piece of code can generate cosine waves up to uh, over 100 kilohertz. Gets a little jagged after you go much higher than that, but um, we'll take a look at that. Um, and we'll also look at how the tools work to um, compile and... Um, you know, build the build the um, objects and then uh, flash the device with the code from these examples. Um, so let's see. First of all, I take a look at my um, Bash profile. I've set up some aliases just to make it convenient for myself to set up the shell, which is what's needed. You need, need to first set up the shell for the IDF tools, and that's done with this command. So I have an alias called IDF that basically sets up my terminal to be able to run the subsequent command. So there's a alias here to build, which is just using this IDF.py uh, uh, tool with the option build. And there's got multiple options on this IDF.py tool. Um, so there's build, there's flash. Flash takes a dash P argument where you give it the um, USB port and then this command to flash. There's also a clean command. So I've set up these aliases to basically set up the environment, build, flash, and clean, uh, which is the most common things that you'd be doing. Um, going here to my terminal, we'll take a look at the path here. Here's the ESP directory you get when you download from the ExpressIF uh, website. You get an ESP IDF directory. It's got tools, etc. but also this examples folder with peripherals, and uh, this is what we're looking at on this video, the DAC examples. There's a DAC continuous signal generator, and then there's a switching over here, a cosine generator along the same path in the example subdirectory under peripherals. And the way that you build these things and then run them, I'm just going to do the cosine since we're already looking at the uh, multiple waveforms, the four waveforms of the signal generator. Uh, this would be the cosine generator, which would be running at, uh, I believe it's, I have it set up for uh, 100 kilohertz. So I'll run this um, IDF build alias. That'll kick off that um, IDF Pi tool to do the build. And then I'll say IDF flash. Once again, that gives it the USB, USB port and tells it to flash the device. And it's finished, so we'll go back over to the scope. And we're gonna expand this out so we can look at it. There's your waveform. This is running at uh, 100 kilohertz. Um, so it's a pretty nice uh, waveform. It's got a little bit of jagginess, jagginess in it at this high frequency. And then there's a little bit of a Distortion right here where the waveform ends and then it begins the next uh, the next cycle. Um, it's outputting the code that they've given an example 
on both DAC channels. Um, so, and you can see they're 100, 180 degrees out of phase. Let's just take a quick look at the code. I haven't really studied it in any great detail, but um, it looks like they're doing something similar to what I was doing um, in terms of uh, generating the waveform, putting it in an array, and then um, outputting that uh, data at a, at a frequency um, such that the um, output is the resultant frequency that you want. So they basically choose the number of samples per waveform, and then um, based upon the frequency you put in, um, it generates the time between those um, steps, if you will. Um, let's see if we can see that in here. Uh, that's the notes that come with it. Uh, here's the main file. And um, yeah, in here, they set up this array size. And you can see in this one, they've got the sine wave, the triangle wave, the saw wave, square wave. They set it up at a certain length, and then they generate the data. Let's see, where does that happen? Generate the wave. Yeah. Okay, they call they call generate the wave. Let's see where that goes. Here it is. Right. And so for I equals zero to the number of points in the waveform they just loop through. And they do that um, for each of the wave types, sine, sine triangle, etc. So they populate the um, arrays. And then um, in the subsequent code, which is here's the continuous example DMA, so they're using uh, direct memory access to get higher speeds than I could achieve in the code that I wrote previously. Um, and here's where they're actually doing the DAC DMA write task. So that's where it's actually outputting the data. And it calls this method DAC continuous write cyclical, giving it the handle to the data, the sine wave data, buffer length. I haven't studied this in any great detail, but they're doing something similar to what I had done in my code where they generate that array and then they just trigger the call to write the data out at uh, uh, frequency that uh, results in the output frequency that you uh, that you want. The interesting thing, when you look at the waveform, and I think I can zoom out and look at this. Uh, this one, I guess, is a little bit too, too dirty in order to try to pick off the uh, number of microseconds between, um, between steps. But I did that before, and it was like 1.2 to, to 2. Uh, microseconds per step so that's uh, better than I had achieved in my um, in my code uh, in any event that's uh, that's um, a look at uh, you know being able to output uh, at a higher frequency than uh, what I had done prior and it's using their example code and using their tools to compile and flash from their example code I did try to do this in VS code with um, Platform I.O. and had no success at all. Uh, Platform I.O. or VS Code kept complaining that it couldn't find the header files. And regardless of how hard I tried for many hours, I couldn't get that uh, path issue resolved. So I don't know what's going on there. And the documentation wasn't clear for Platform I.O., so I couldn't figure that out. If anybody has any ideas and can post that uh, below this video, I'd sure appreciate it. Okay, so that's it for now. Thank you for watching.